Did you know that it takes just over two minutes to beat the first stage and final fight? That's pretty much on par with both the original Double Dragon and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time, both of which take around two and a half minutes to beat their respective first stages. Streets of Rage 2, on the other hand, will take you around six minutes to beat stage one, which definitely puts it on the longer side. But that's nothing when compared to Skinny and Franco Fists of Violence. A beat-em-up where the first stage will take you, and I am not exaggerating, close to a half hour to complete. Yeah, that's a whole lot of button mashing without a break. And that's just the first of many, many problems with this awful brawler. This is my review of Skinny and Franco Fists of Violence. Before we can get to Skinny and Franco, we first need to talk about Franco. Specifically, the Amiga game Franco the Crazy Revenge, which was a 1994 beat-em-up inspired by the genre greats like Double Dragon and Final Fight. It was made by a short-lived Polish developer named World Software, which ended up going out of business just two years after Franco hit store shelves. Now, 29 years later, we're getting a follow-up of sorts from Blue Sunset Games, another Polish company with a dubious track record. Touting that one of the creators of Franco the Crazy Revenge is back to oversee the sequel, Blue Sunset wants you to believe that they've brought the franchise into the 21st century. Unfortunately, having suffered through this boring, frustrating, and ugly brawler, I'm here to say that Skinny and Franco is a game stuck in the past in all the worst ways possible. Nearly three decades after the events of the Crazy Revenge, Franco has decided to return to Poland in hopes of saving his old friend from a whole bunch of new drama. This time around, he's teamed up with Skinny, a street fighter who's ready to wreak havoc on the thugs, gangs, and low-life scum that populate the back alleys of Szczecin. It's a perfectly good setup that 9 times out of 10 would lead to a fun and exciting throwback beat-em-up. Sadly, this is that one time where everything falls apart in spectacular fashion. Look, I think it's clear that this is going to be an extremely negative review, so what I'm going to do is start out by talking about a few of the things that this game gets right. For one thing, it's clear the developer Blue Sunset Games has put a lot of work into creating the violent streets at the center of Skinny and Franco. There are a lot of nice little touches in the background, such as spectators that you can interact with and hand-drawn enemies that show real damage as they get bruised and battered. I also like how there are dozens of weapons to pick up, including garbage cans and boxes that'll confuse the various gang members. The developer has turned a short and simple brawler into a surprisingly long sequel, complete with a bunch of optional locations and secrets to find. Unfortunately, that's the end of the good things that I can say about Skinny and Franco. Put simply, Fists of Violence is total trash. It's a game that not only gets all the fundamentals wrong, but doubles and triples down on all the worst mistakes. After nearly 40 years of seeing companies like Sega, Capcom, Technos, and Konami get the formula right, it's honestly hard to believe that somebody would make a beat-em-up this inept in the year 2023. If there's a less fun brawler floating around in the world, I certainly haven't played it. Let's go ahead and start with the most glaring problem, the length. At the start of this review, I pointed out the most beat-em-ups feature levels that are maybe two or three minutes long. That is not the case when it comes to Skinny and Franco. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that the first stage of the game took me 29 minutes and 20 seconds. Yeah, take a moment to let that sink in. Just one stage of this game takes a half hour to beat, and that's when I was trying to rush through as quickly as possible. Put that in perspective, you can beat all of Double Dragon in around 25 minutes. While that may not sound like a big problem, I assure you that it is. In order to demonstrate this issue, let's go ahead and take a look at what you have to do in Stage 2. Now, things start out pretty straightforward, as either Skinny or Franco, or both, slowly walk down the street beating up literally dozens of identical enemies. About 20 minutes into the stage, we fight this convenience store clerk who looks and acts like a boss, but is definitely not a boss. 
You see, after beating her, we still need to fight our way through the construction site and take on dozens of more bad guys. It's not until around 10 minutes later when we run into the mechanical god, who must be a boss because he has a completely different life bar. But wait, hang on, let's not get ahead of ourselves because we're not even close to being done with this godforsaken stage. You see, after you defeat the mechanical god, you're gonna need to drive his car back through the level that you just fought through until a big, burly woman smashes that car with a cement roller. Once again, this looks and feels like a boss fight, complete with a lot of cheap tactics on her part. But again, it is not a boss fight. And even when you beat her, you still have to fight your way through the back alley, which is where you'll run into the level's actual boss. All in all, it took me around 40 minutes to beat the second stage. The same length it takes somebody to beat all a final fight. The reason this is a problem is because if you die at any point during the stage, you have to go all the way back to the very beginning. That wouldn't be a big deal if the stage ended with the cashier boss, but there are at least three, maybe four more boss-like characters to contend with before you reach anything resembling a checkpoint. In other words, if you lose to the mechanical god, then you just lost 30 minutes of progress. And knowing that there are two equally tough fights in store for you after that makes the level designs even more infuriating. It doesn't help that many of my restarts happen because of game-breaking bugs and glitches. It's frustratingly common to get stuck in a car or some part of the background, unable to move or free yourself. The only solution in a situation like that is to start the level all over again, losing 15 minutes. But what about the time when my character got stuck in the middle of a kick, unable to move or take any damage from the street thugs? I was literally frozen mid-kick, something I could not break free of, no matter what I tried. Once again, the only solution was to start the level over, which was another 30 minutes lost. Let me tell you, these problems zapped any enthusiasm I had for the game and made me seriously contemplate quitting on more than one occasion. There are other problems, like the sluggish play control that makes doing anything a nightmare. You can't just walk over an item and pick it up, you have to stop on it, wait for a few seconds, and then pick it up. There is a block button, but it barely works. Trying to perform a rushing elbow attack or a jump kick is pointless because they never seem to connect. It sometimes feels like just walking around is a pain. Of course, it doesn't help that the enemies are good at breaking your combos and landing tons of cheap hits. You can replenish some of your life by drinking beer, but the game doesn't bother to tell you that. I only found that out by accident. And then there are these bikers. These terrible, awful, no good bikers. This is an enemy that the game likes to rely on, and you'll hate them more and more with each appearance. These guys will drive by you, constantly knocking our hero to the ground. Even when you think you're out of their range, they'll smack you down. And then as you're getting back up, the second biker will smack you down again. I hate these guys. I hate that it takes a pixel-perfect jump kick to knock them off their bikes, which is almost impossible to do. I hate that they only knock me down, leaving the enemies to just gang up on me when I get back up. I hate that this is the game's go-to anytime they need to make things more challenging. I just hate these bikers. And the truth is, I hated every second of Skinny and Franco Fists of Violence. It's an ugly, mean-spirited game that actively hates everybody in it, especially the women. This is the first beat-em-up where I actually felt dirty when cleaning up the crime-filled streets. I'm not sure if this was the sequel the Franco fans wanted, but I do know that they deserved better. Skinny and Franco, Fist of Violence, is one of the worst beat-em-ups that I've ever played. Three decades after first hitting Amiga, Franco is back with a new brawler with all the old moves. Unfortunately, Skinny and Franco, Fist of Violence is about as bad as a follow-up can be, with stiff gameplay, offensively bad writing, and a mean-spirited story that is filled to the brim with game-breaking bugs and glitches. Worse yet, the levels insist on overstaying their welcome, with most of them reaching well beyond a half hour. What should have been a sprint through Poland's crime-ridden streets becomes a full marathon that'll wear you out with its shallow and horribly repetitive action. 
It's honestly hard to believe that a developer was able to screw up the beat em up genre formula this much in 2023. Avoid it at all costs. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What's the worst game that you've played recently? It doesn't have to be this year since, I mean, it's only May, but just recently, the last couple of years or so. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back tomorrow with a review of Oni, the search for the mightiest Oni. That is, unless Nintendo announces a new classic game for their subscription service, which, I mean, let's face it, should happen any time now. They're overdue. Tune in tomorrow to see what happens, I guess. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.